My cue isn't good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, this is different. I'm not very tall, and I don't have a bright shirt on. I have a muted colored shirt. We almost coordinate. You'll see that later at home. Uh, oh, so then I'll have to do a hello. Yeah, Sandy is. Um, for for those of you watching, uh, we're we're in full on Mystery Island construction, and. Um, so we have lots and lots of uh, fun decorations uh, on stage area. So Sandy is not hidden behind the Christmas tree. She's hidden behind a surfboard and the Tiki hut. We'll call it a hut because, but anyway. Um, announcements. Obviously, Mystery Island is coming soon. We kick off uh, Bible school on Sunday evening, next Sunday evening, the 2nd of August. We feed kiddos at 5.30, and we'll start at 6. Um, everything is looking wonderful, and we're all getting into that pre-excitement and exhaustion, those have had, that have been working so hard and diligently on our decorations. Um, and uh, Sandy's preparing for those 120 kids she's going to feed. No, she shaking her head. I see that. <laughs> I don't know, but I did see we have another online registration, which reminds me that um, those of you who are wanting your children to come, you can go ahead and um, go to the website. The easiest way probably is if you like us on Facebook, the link is on the Facebook page to the website. Um, lots of us have been sharing the VBS site. There's also a link on there. Um, lots of information. Um, there's also, we had an article that was in the Pathway paper about our brotherhood, um, and that was put on there. Um, lots of information. There's a way to do online giving if you so choose. Um, lots and lots of stuff, and it is still under construction, still being added. Events are added on there, calendar things. There is also a way to submit prayer requests. Um, and probably lots of other things that I don't know about yet, so I'm still learning it. I'm a little bit, as Pastor learned, or a lot, as some people would consider, technologically um, deficient, um, impaired. I need the uh, computer for dummies course. That's what I need. Anyway, um, services this evening at 7. Uh, we have Bible study Wednesday at 7. There's also, if you want to choose to Zoom for that, Pastor sends out a link for that on the uh, prayer chain um, message. I've been seeing it, though. No? Okay, he's telling me, no, he's not doing that. If you're interested in Zooming, we can do that and let one of us know. Or put a, put a hey, I want to I Zoom in. Um, next Sunday morning, because that will be the first Sunday of the month, that's our normal business meeting time. If you'll notice, there is a time change and it is bolded in your bulletin, but it will be immediately after Sunday school. Um, are we going to do up or down or decide then? Okay, downstairs. So if you're upstairs for Sunday school, just go down the steps, those of you that are already there. Um, but we are going to be doing that. Let's see. Anything else? The other thing, and it's less than a month away now, is the first day of school. And we need to be in lots and lots of prayer for our school administrators and staff and the students. We're all trying to figure out how to navigate in this current conditions. And the most intelligent thing I've heard about all of it was every situation is different. No two school districts, no two communities are the same right now. And so it's very hard to navigate um, during this time. But one thing that I do know is the school administrators are taking it very seriously and they're really trying to do what's best for their district and their students and their staff um, with the information that they have. And I know how much difficulty we have at, in a medical facility trying to determine what's right and you're trying to have mostly non-medically, you know, teachers are teachers. They're not 
nurses, physicians, <laughs> laboratory, scientists, all those things to understand the science part as much and the safety part. And so realizing, and then, but they have to deal with all of the complaints and the, all of that. And um, that is um, why I'm glad I'm not a teacher. <laughs> so um, I do, we do need to remember them all in prayer as we move into uh, prayer time. Um, if you have a printed copy of the prayer list, you'll notice there are lots of new people added um, to that um, list, um, those currently. We want to remember the Rosemary Barton family today. Her services are this afternoon. Um, with that, um, she's been, uh, had a lot of issues the last couple months and in this past, and um, several in the hospital. Um, I did want to say, though, we have some, some people who are doing very well, some praise reports. Mom's doing very well after her surgery. She's trying to stay in um, and um, trying to follow those instructions. Those of you who have had that, you know, you're not supposed to bend over, you're not supposed to lift, you, all that blah, blah, blah. So she's trying to be good. And she is watching, assuming Internet's working well, she's watching uh, with us. So she is worshiping with us uh, at home via Facebook. Um, I understand LaVon's doing well after her surgery and at home and um, is healing well. So that's a big answer prayer there. Um, anybody else have a praise report? Well, it's been hot. <laughs> we got a little bit of rain somewhere there. What about that, Kelly? So Kelly's niece, Heather McCormick, is is waiting anxiously for that baby to come. So and everything's doing well. And and another concern is she's a little bit older. Um, so that's always a concern. Um, yes, and and it's always a lot. There is so much. Um, you know, used to everybody and their brother could show up and welcome and hold and pat. And now you're lucky if dad gets to go when the baby's born. So. Lots and lots don't have the support that you normally have. So um, anybody else we need to add to the prayer list that's not um, already on there? Okay. Well, what did I do with my pencil? Harmel Bradley. My Uncle Lloyd. Um, Burden that I mentioned Wednesday night passed away yesterday. Okay. Uh, so his family is um, kids are spread out all over the place, and so we're gonna um, we'll evict and then come back here when they're ready. Uh, a rough time for all of them. <clears throat> all right. Anybody else? Kim, would you lead our prayer time this morning? Mm -hmm. Mary, Father, we just come to you now lifting up these games. Lord, you know their needs. You know uh, their healing. We just ask for comfort, strength, uh, healing, just their peace that they need right now. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for being able to be in your home today, Lord, and, and uh, being able to worship you with with uh, everyone that's here, be with those that are not here, Lord, and, and those that uh, are with us uh, watching via Facebook, just watching their over Scott and directly. Be with David Lord, that uh, he uh, prepares to uh, give the message to us and that you have laid on his heart this week to be able to go in and worship. We just ask these things in your precious name. Amen. All right, let's sing.
<clears throat> Let others see Jesus in you. <clears throat> Swim to be on the water. You need to be in the boat. Okay, so 
is it our way to get to Mystery Island? Well, it's far enough away that a real boat would probably work better. Okay. Instead of a rubber boat. Okay. Get you know if a shark comes by and his dorsal fit hits that, it might pop it, and the shark sharks can be eaten plenty. I'm sure they're around in the water. Yeah. Well, can the boat be metal so we don't get? Yeah, but you won't blow up a metal boat unless you make it explode. Well, I have, so it'd be big enough to get all these kids over there, right? Because I found out we're going to do crafts. Crafts? Uh huh. And and we're going to learn about the one true God, about um, and Bible verses and <laughs> food. Really? I bet we even are going to have macaroni and cheese. <laughs> so, we got to get ready for these kids. Well, I think you need to rethink the rubber so boat. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. Well, can we all just be praying for all the kids that God's going to bring through those doors to the three Amen. And we'll figure out how to get them yeah. there. Yep. <laughs> one, one paddle at a time. <laughs> I'm working on those youth. I'm working on them. Like I said, you may have to youth class maybe at my house. I'm not really sure. I do know if you feed them, they will come, they they will come and they will, will keep coming they and keep coming. Yes, they eat ice cream. Um, some are some don't eat everything, but they'll usually rummage and find something. They're pretty resourceful. They like sandwiches or mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever's in the freezer, they'll eat pretty much. Yeah. All right, let's sing again. Yes, I'll sing the 
<laughs> and we'll finish up our song service with Send the Light. <coughs> BBS already this morning from Allison, and you've heard from Kim, and you've heard from Brother Daniel. You're going to hear about it from me, too, <laughs> because it's coming up on us really fast. And if you look up here, didn't Kim and Alicia do a wonderful job? I mean, they've had a little help, but then they do a wonderful job getting this ready. You know what? This does not just happen. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of people to do VBS. And so maybe you feel like there's nothing that you can do. But I'm going to tell you there is. Because it's not done yet. There's still stuff to be done to get ready for VBS. And then there's going to be all the stuff that's going to go on during VBS. And I want to tell you, sometimes people, it's hard. And I remember one VBS year. This struck me this morning. I remember one VBS year that I suffered through a bout of intestinal virus during VBS with a house full of grandkids and somehow managed to pull it together and was there every night, even though I didn't feel well. It struck me this morning that if that happens to me this year, I can't be here because we can't know what is a dangerous virus and what is just a little one. And there's not any of you that can keep me from getting a virus except through one way. And you know what that is. And that's prayer. 
I look back on VBSs when I've had my grandkids here before, and I want to tell you people I have regrets because I let myself get so tired and so stressed that I know I missed opportunities to really share Jesus with my grandkids like I should have. And that's what this is all about. And so it would mean a lot to me in Bible school if somebody came to me and said, I pledge I will pray for you every day until Bible school's over. And I know Sandy would appreciate that working in the kitchen and, and Mike, whoever else is going to be helping in there. And Brother Daniel would appreciate that. And, and Mona and everybody and, and Verla and everybody who's going to be working in BBS. There's going to be a bunch of people here. And we need your prayers. And send the light. That's what it's all about. You know, one, one prop that we don't have for this BBS is a lighthouse. But that's what we're trying to be to this community. We don't know if we'll have big crowds or if we'll have small. People may be afraid to send their children here. This will be the first year my grandchildren won't be here because their mother's afraid for them to come. We, there are other parents who probably feel the same way. I know during the food giveaway that I had, there was one parent who told me, I won't be sending her and I won't be sending her to school because I'm afraid of this virus. So pray that we have kids here. And it doesn't matter if we have a large group or a small group. There are kids in this community who need to know about Jesus. And there may be kids who have never come to Bible school before and maybe have never heard about Jesus before, and this is their chance. So I encourage you, please find somebody who's working in Bible school as you leave today and say, you're the person I'm going to pray for, and then pray for the whole thing. Oh, and this is the last day of Annie Armstrong offering. I took the things off the walls because we're getting ready for VBS, but totals still stand as they were last week. Next week, we start Missouri Missions. Morning, everybody. Morning. I'll be preaching from the right side of the church this morning. I was taught in seminary, you know why Baptists usually preach in the center of the church? Because when you bring the truth, you bring it straight down the middle. So we're going to, the truth is going to be from here to Dennis, and we're still going to split it right in the middle. Because when you preach, you're always supposed to bring the truth. So uh, we will be in Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 18 this morning, furthering the gospel. And we have Paul, who is in prison in Rome, because he's a wonderful Roman citizen who sat there and told them that back in Acts chapter 21 through Acts chapter 28. If you want to read why Paul is where he's at, read those chapters. It doesn't take long. But here Paul is, he's in prison. But even though he's in prison, is in chains, he has a guard with him, he is still furthering the gospel. Can we say we can do that too? from here, that we're still furthering the gospel for Jesus Christ in this town, in this community. So if you would stand with me this morning, if you are able, as we begin reading. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ, and most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife, and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains. But the latter, out of love, knowing that I am appointed for the defense of the gospel, what then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, 
and in this I rejoice. Yes, I and will rejoice. You may be seated. So here's Paul. He's a prisoner in Rome. But he didn't let it get him down. He didn't let it distract him from his mission because he was told that he needs to go preach the word to the Gentiles. What a better place to start preaching the word of Christ than to a bunch of Romans who like to go to the Colosseum and watch the gladiators kill Christians. Of course, it wasn't about that time frame yet. But, you know, but Paul was still able to do the work for Jesus Christ. He was still able to tell people about Christ, about what he can do for them in their lives. He didn't let his situation bother him. So how many times have we been in a situation where we think somebody needs to know about Jesus, we just need to say one thing to that person, maybe, you know, I'll pray for you, God loves you, and we don't do it. But Paul, where he was at, he was a captive. He was a prisoner. He was the one who was the bad boy. But if we flip it around and we look at the captive audience that Paul had from the Roman soldiers who were his jailers and everybody in the court who accepted him because they believed that he did no wrong. The only thing that he was doing was preaching Jesus Christ. Look how many people Paul reached to further the gospel. Paul has his concerns about those who were still out preaching. The ones that he had out there that he knew that were preaching the gospel, they could have got the idea in their heads and said, well, what? Here's Paul. He said Jesus talked to him, told him to go preach the gospel, take the word to the Gentiles, but yet he's in prison. Well, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to be in a Roman prison. I'm not going to, I'm going to stop preaching Jesus to people. Because look at Paul, look at the example, look what happened to him. But you know what? It did the exact opposite. It emboldened those individuals to go out and preach Christ, to let people know this is what Jesus can do for you. Have we done that? Are we doing that? Do we take a situation and look at the situation and see whether the coffee cup is half full or half empty? Which is it better to be? Half full or half empty? Is it better to share the gospel or not to share the gospel? These preachers were more emboldened because Paul was the one that they looked up to. Paul was the one who had his experience on the Damascus Road. Paul was the one who taught them. He's a good guy. But yet there was others who were out there preaching who were thrilled as could be. Thank God, Paul's in jail. Prosperity preachers, as we would want to say. They were probably the first ones. Why were these people so happy? Even though they were preaching Christ, their ambition was more of their own. They sit there and they looked and they said, look, Paul is in jail. Now I have the opportunity to go build up my own congregation, build up my own followers, and I can surpass Paul because Paul ain't going to do nothing. He's in jail. He's in prison. Is that the kind of preacher you want to listen to? The one who's doing it for his own glory and his own gain? Even though these people were doing that, they were still preaching Christ because they were making Paul's change harder because Paul was stuck in a spot. He had his captive audience. He was still furthering the gospel. But these people were still furthering the gospel as well, but they were doing it for the wrong reasons. They were doing it for their own personal gain. Because their egos said, look, Paul's in jail. Our numbers are low. Being as Paul is in jail, we can reach more people. We can go to more people. We can build up our numbers. We can surpass Paul. We can look better than Paul. That's what their plan was. That's what their motive was. Instead of preaching the love 
of Jesus Christ as the other ones did more boldly, sharing His Word, letting them know what's going on. But Paul was a defender of the Gospel. Did it hurt him that these people were saying, well, you're in jail, you don't count no more? I'm sure it did. We all have feelings. And sometimes when our toes get stepped on, we go out and walk away. Because we don't want our toes to be stepped on anymore. But Paul didn't care. He was happy and he rejoiced that the gospel was still being preached. Even though the motives of everybody wasn't the right motive. Because it was a numbers game to them. It was a popularity contest to them. Look what happened. The gospel was still being preached and the gospel was still growing. Has anybody ever listened to a prosperity preacher in this day and age? A lot of prosperity preachers today won't take you through the 66 books of the Bible. They won't tell you about the good, the bad and the what the sin is. All they're going to do is say, well, if you do this, if you come to church every Sunday, you give to God every Sunday, guess what? God's going to bless you. Where's the salvation message? Where's the message that says, if you do this, you're a sinner? They don't preach it because it doesn't gain them anything. We could listen to prosperity preachers all day long because... We just want to hear the good stuff. We want our ears tickled so everything we hear is good, easy, and it's digestible. But we don't want to hear the bad stuff. We don't want to hear that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. We don't want to hear that God says if you do this, it's a sin. Because it doesn't fit our world today. There's a lot of things in our world that doesn't fit today that we may not seem to fit. But when we go back and look in Timothy, where he tells us, the truth shall become a lie and the lie shall become the truth. Have we seen that today? It is more prevalent today. That, that is going on in our world and our society. Because that is what's happening. There's a lot of organizations who call themselves organizations because they can't. but they don't like or love God. They don't like or love what God stands for. They don't like to hear that if you do this, it's a sin, you need to repent. Because they don't think they've done nothing wrong because of society. We have the opportunity next week, starting at Sunday, to shine the light in this community to really turn the light up, to further the gospel of Jesus Christ here in Reynolds County. We have the opportunity to reach people that have been reached before. We can see how much they've grown spiritually, but they'll only grow spiritually if we feed them spiritually. And no hot dogs and macaroni and cheese and hamburgers are not spiritual food. I don't really ever recall Jesus saying that. He is the bread of life. He is the living water. He is the I am. And he came here for us. He came here to make sure that he goes out and seeks that one sheep out of the 99 that's missing. There's still a lot of sheep that need to be found. We have the opportunity to help find those sheep and further the gospel at the same time. We have to be able to tell these kids from 3 to 99 about the love of Jesus Christ. Because like Paul, for five days we're going to have a captive audience for a few hours, two and a half hours, I believe. And if we count the half hour that when they come in and they sit down to eat. That's three hours. 
But one thing we need to show these young people is that the dinner that they're ready to eat, the meal that they're going to eat, we need to give thanks to God for being able to provide that to them. Because some of them probably have never prayed in their house over a meal, thanking God for what's on the table before them. So we have a lot of things that we can do to shine that light for these young people from 3 to 99. This is my granddaughter. When we sit at the table to eat, she knows when it's time to pray. She grabs her mom's hand, she grabs my hand, and we pray. She knows what to expect. Can't we pass that on to others and show them what God's love is about? That God is the one who provided this for them so we can further the gospel? I believe we can. We have to be ready in an instant to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. If somebody comes up to you, no matter if you're a teacher or a worker, or you're just there to help along, help people along, and they say, how do I go to heaven? What are you going to tell them? You need Jesus. This country right now is in desperate need of Jesus. It is in desperate need of an awakening. But is it the awakening that we really think this country needs? Or is it the beginning of the end? As the song that I think the Gaithers came up with the song was the end of the beginning. Because in order for things here to conclude, it has to end. In order for us to go be with our Heavenly Father, we have to have a beginning. We need to let them know and understand. Jesus is the Son of God. And he came here for each and every one of them as he did for all of you and myself. And I like pointing because I got three fingers pointing back at me. We need to be able to share with them what is going on. Why are they here? Are they just here for the food, the crafts, and Mystery Island? No, they're here to learn. Some people learn differently. Some people are here, and you would be surprised how much the younger generation, three to five year olds pick up more than the seven to 99. Because at seven years old, you think you're a teenager already. And when you're 13, you think you're 20. So I guess if, you, if, if you're 16 or 17, you're in your 30s or 40s, I guess. Because they think they have all that knowledge. Well, they don't have all that knowledge. We have the knowledge in this sanctuary today to help further the gospel. We have to be emboldened like the preachers that were preaching when Paul was in jail because they knew Paul was in jail. God was taking care of him. Let's go. Let's share the gospel. Let's do what God has called us to do. Share his word. Let's be emboldened while we do this. God will take care of us. What's the worst thing a man could do to you? What's the worst thing a man could do to me? Send me home to God early? We don't have nothing to fear. We love God. He will take care of us. Paul didn't have nothing to lose. He was still working, furthering the gospel in Rome. How did he get to Rome? Well, God told him, you're going to go Preach to the Gentiles in Rome. Well, he had a long way to get there. Like I said, if, you, if, you, if you're blurry on the story, read Acts chapter 21 through 28. It's a good refresher. But we cannot be afraid to tell people about Jesus Christ. We cannot be afraid to share the gospel. God's going to take care of us. Remember, he is with us forever and always, even through the end of the age. Because when the end of this age is done, we're with Him for eternity. Eternity is a long time. That's what we're shooting for. That's the goal. 
that we need to give these young people when they come to vacation Bible school. Jesus loves you. Jesus wants you to be with him. Here's what you have to do. You have to believe. And it's easier to get a young child to believe in Jesus Christ, whose mind hasn't been corrupted by society of today. Because when kids leave home, they go to college, a lot of them are tested. Because the ways of the world are greater and more of an influence in their lives than their spiritual upbringing. But we have to remember, everything we do as followers of Christ is seen by others, as the song said this morning. We need to let our light shine. We need to be able to reach out to those who are in need. Those who have questions, those questions need to be answered. And when we do that, we answer their questions. We tell them the truth. They're going to start asking more questions because their curiosity is going to be getting greater. Thursdays. Thursdays in the Vacation Bible School is a very important day. That's when you have your people talk to them about salvation. Committing themselves to Christ so we can further the gospel. We have to be able to reach them. We have to be able to explain it to them so they understand it. Because I can stand up here and I can say a lot of things using those big words that you learn in college that are pretty much useless because nobody understands them. Nobody hears them anymore. It would fly right over their head. The gospel was made to be a simple thing to distribute. Jesus is the Son of God. He was born in Mary. He came here. He died for you, pure and simple. He died for you because he loves you. He wants to have that relationship with you. All you have to do is accept him into your heart. Now on the other side, when the devil gets in there, he's going to say, well, you've done this in your life. You'll never be able to be good enough to be God's child. You've done that in your life. Why would God want you? That's what we're up against. Good versus evil. Spiritual warfare is real. Because the spiritual battles we fight, we cannot see the enemy. We have to understand it. These kids probably don't realize that. We have to put our best foot forward. And teachers, pray for your students every day. The first day you get them, to the last day you have them, to the next year, to see if they come back. Always keep them in your prayers. That's what Paul did. With those out there preaching the word, he kept them in his prayers. Jesus prayed for us too. John chapter 17, the high priestly prayer. Even though we weren't born yet, he prayed for each and every one of us. He loves us that much, God does. He loves you unconditionally. He knows we're not perfect. He knows we don't have a chance or stand a chance of being perfect in His eyes without the blood of His Son covering our sins. Because that's why Jesus went to the cross. So when we have these young people here, we need to let them know, pure and simple, God loved you so much, He still loves you, that He sent His Son to die on a cross for you before you were even born. God sees it all. He knows everything. Let us pray.
Father, we thank you again for this wonderful day that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for the ability that we have to continue to meet in this building that you have established for us here in this community, that we can honor and glorify you. Father, we know that there are followers of you who are still struggling with the current situation. We know that, Father, that there are ones who are doing what they believe is right by opening up their churches where they're told not to. Father, we know you are the one who is in charge. And Father, we lift up to you the Vacation Bible School, which starts next week. We, we pray, Father, for all the children that you can send our way, that we can further your gospel by letting them know about you, your son, your word, and how much love you have for each and every one of them. Father, I especially lift up to you all those who are involved in VBS here in this church, that you continue to be with them as things draw close to the beginning. And Father, we pray that you'll give them the patience, the knowledge, and the things that they need to make this a successful vacation Bible school. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.